Gordon Ramsay is a British tool. He is making some of the worst steaks or burgers that we've ever seen. I'm going to show you this. This is Gordon Ramsay's Tall Burger. Watch First this. I would like to say a big thank you for helping. Big thank me you. Past 10 million. 10 million subscribers on YouTube. Um, why? Doesn't deserve it. 10 million because it's you watching those incredible videos. Um, how do I pay this? I'm going to keep up the incredible work and more importantly, start creating even more content to get to Cricket 20 stew. million. But thank you. Ah, Honestly, ah. Um, nope, I'm sorry. blessed Just because 10 million people. That's a lot of viewers in my kitchen, let me tell you. So um, I'd like to take kitchen. this moment and apologize for absolutely nothing. And to help celebrate 10 million, what I'm going to do for you now is the most amazing burger. No, no, you know not, burgers, no right? it's not the most amazing. Uh, Don't listen to this. When they said I was mad seven years ago, opening a burger store in Vegas at Planet Hollywood. Um, it's not a again, burger store. No, no it's a restaurant, sir. Unique. We finished those burgers with Devonshire butter. So I put this amazing mix together now, and it's a... 85% chuck and a 15% wow. brisket. Wow. But no took... one is making burgers with 85 15. It's not done. Maybe a bolognese. Maybe you're making tacos, you get an 85 15. You don't want all that extra grease in there. He did say 85% chuck, 15% brisket. Oh. But look at the patties. They don't look that fatty. No, they look there's pretty. no fat. And what he's done is he's cut up. This is an old 80s. Creepy hack. He's cut up cubes of butter and put them in with the burger. That is a fool's gimmick move. You don't do that. You get some nice 80-20 or you grind your own. We've been grinding our own exclusively. I won't go back to not grinding We will not go now. back. It is so easy. It takes me two minutes. Here's the trick. You need to put your meat in the freezer. You need to put your grinder in the freezer. We got like a $30 grinder. It works amazing. You go out and you buy fatty looking chuck roast. We go cheaper to Whole Foods. Than ground beef. You get the chuck roast. You go, give me the fattiest one. It's like six ninety five a pound for chuck roast. You get the fatty kind. You, I slice it up. I throw it in the freezer for 30 minutes. I throw the grinder pieces in the freezer for 30 minutes. I take it out. I grind it. It takes two minutes. And I've got the best beef. It's way fattier than the beef Ugh. that you get in the stores. You got to do it. I'm telling you. And that look ground at how beef these in the stores are pressed. It's all the shit. They throw in scraps from all the shit in the stores. And, and God knows how long it's sitting out there. Could they be sitting out there for together, a week. They, go, uh, they mush they it. Go. It's awful. Yeah. Awful. The ground beef in the store. Grind your own beef. It costs nothing. It takes nothing. It's, it's fun. Cheaper How many times? It's not it. like you're having burgers every day, anyway. So the day you have burgers, you can grind your own beef. You're going to save money. It's going to be fantastic. It's so easy to do. The trick is you got to half freeze that meat. People buy these cheap grinders and they start putting in room temperature meat, and it smears. Okay, and then you go, oh, the grinder's not good. This is too complicated. You throw it all away. You got to freeze the meat about halfway, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. You put it in, you get these little pebbles. You want the pebbles. You want to be able to, yeah, it should be like a bowl of beads, your hamburger meat. And then you loosely form the patties. You don't smash them in. You loosely form them. You want that space between the little, okay. Now, I am going to do this live for you eventually. I know. I think we should just do an Instagram live video. Well, we're waiting. You know, uh, I'm just a little worried here. We're not. We've got everything pretty much down. Uh, we just secured our burger recipe, which I believe is the top burger recipe in the country. People won't believe me. But we're having a little problem with the buns. Right now, we're using these Whole Foods brioche buns, which are great tasting. But they sink. The tops sink. For some reason, when you grill the buns, the tops fall. So it's not the best looking bun. It tastes great. The taste is great. But if I showed people, they'd go, why is that bun falling? So something's off with their bun. I need a new bun guy. It's impossible to get a bun guy. You know, I don't want anything in the store that's, uh, I want it baked there. Okay, so I don't want anything that's got the preservatives in it, those buns that you get in the bag. Those have been sitting for months. You don't want that. So I'm. Uh, it's impossible to get a bun guy. The restaurants have bun guys. 
make buns just for the restaurants. That's why they're all nice and I'd perfect. I'd like to learn how to make our own buns. we got to make our own so buns. So that we can have that's total nice. control. I think that's the only way. But, uh, yeah, it really is going to be the only way. And we were using the Martin's potato rolls for a little bit, but good. they're not as good. We found that the Whole Foods Brioche bun, the one that you get in that six-pack, is currently the best bun for the type of hamburger we're making, which is the best hamburger that you could get right now. Seriously, you won't go back. Uh, here we go. Gordon Ramsay making a tall burger. Watch how gross this could be. Some blocks of butter, froze it, and then grated the butter into the burger. Unnecessary. So we get that it's nice, cool. rich, buttery, nope. smooth flavor inside that. That delicious. was something a few people attempted years ago, and it kind of went away. You know, there's all these tips and tricks that kind of don't stick. That's one of them. Grating butter into the burger is a unnecessary tip that never stuck. Gordon's wrong on this one. Here. Burger. Now, the secret behind any great burger is in the grill. Crank that thing up high, okay? Always close that lid, okay? Keep it down. That gets the max amount of I'll heat also say this. Uh, through my experimentation, grilling burgers is about the worst way to make a burger. A guy in the chat just said, everything Mike is saying is basic shit that everyone knows. Is it basic shit that everyone knows? Oh, because please. Who said that? see the pictures Who said that, that? see. Next Who said level it? marketing. Well, he's crazy. He's stupid. I mean, basic shit that everyone knows. Like Are you out of your mind? Should know this no, stuff, no, 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 but... no, 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 no. It's basic shit that all great people know. <laughs> How, do you know anybody? Do you know any guys? And by the way, next level marketing, Jules, you fell for another one here. But first of all, you would hope this. Take a look around. Go out to eat at some of your friends' houses. They know zilch. Nada. Nothing. They don't know. You want to know how I know? This isn't basic shit that everybody knows. I've gone to every single hamburger restaurant in Chicago. None of them are anything near the ones we make here. None of them. Au Chevelle, one of the top rated hamburger joints. It's disgusting. There's a lineup out so there. So it's not basic. Nobody knows it. Shake Shack doesn't even know it. Everyone is doing it wrong. So that guy's either trolling or he's amazing like me and assumes that we all have that same mind. We do not, sir. Because the burgers I'm making are not available for purchase. So everybody does not know this technique because they're nowhere to be found. I have never had a burger like the burger that I can make. Neither. This isn't a joke. I don't even like burgers. This is from not other a joke. Now. Look at the bring back group. Go, hey, make a steak. This is not basic shit. You would think it's basic shit. Now, I either want an apology from that guy or an admittance that he's lying. You okay, have five Joel? minutes. You have five minutes. BBG proves Mark is right. Ninety cent of people, ninety nine percent of people will show up to a barbecue with. The worst possible ingredients. Mike's right. This is basic shit that everyone should know. They don't. They don't. We could have a burger off anytime. Anytime. Here's Gordon Ramsay, one of the top <laughs> chefs in the world, making a burger. He said he's sorry. Oh, you're sorry? There you go. You have to accept Then why an would apology. you say that? Why would you even say that to me? Imagine if you said that around me. You know how hard you get hit with the back of a gun? Do you understand what I would do to that guy's fucking head if he was around here when he said this? And I'd love to see his Martina Marcota style cooking. I am furious at that guy. All right. Here's Gordon Ramsay. Oh, let's see. Is he covering the basic shit that everybody knows? Here we go. Once you've blend it the burger season it beautifully and then shape it okay i quite like a nice sort of thin pate that's and a not nice thin. wide girth spread. there's a half pound burger he's making here nice and thin huh the thicker the burger get the harder it is to get the temperature cooked perfectly inside so be smart yeah, i like that nicely seasoned salt pepper i've got a little bit of garlic powder okay no now you've seen me cook burgers many times but i don't I've, need a garlic I've, I've burger by the with way this one because i'm gonna fry an egg like you've never seen before. Oh, because fried, fried egg, egg on a burger. By the way, fried egg on a burger is a joke. That was a bust. That was a food trend that if you're still doing, you're cuckoo. 
Malcolm made some killer smash burgers. He did cover them in cheese, though. Oh, no. Wait till you hear oh, this. Oh, wait till you I'm not giving away that tip. Nope. You have to wait till it's time. I only eat my Oklahoma onion smash burgers with cheese. People might be going, Mike, what cheese do you use? Because you said you hate cheese. Stay tuned to find out. They're, they're, I'm not telling them today. No, I know. There's Stay no fucking way. for many months to I find eat out. <laughs> one type of cheese on my burgers that is superior to any cheese you could possibly think of. I bet the guy who thinks it's the most basic, let me guess. Hey, wait, next level. What kind of cheese do I eat on my burgers? If you get it right, you have one guess. That next level guy, you guess what kind of cheese I eat on my burgers. If you guess it right. You win the burger no, visit. No, if you guess it right, $100 <laughs> so that you could make your own burgers for all of your friends. Seriously, you have one chance to guess. You have one chance to guess. The next level guy, come on. Where is he? And now everyone else is guessing for him. No, I don't know why they would do He did? Swiss. 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 Unbelievable. Oh, it's the basic shit that everyone knows. Swiss. I wouldn't go near Swiss with a gun. <laughs> Sailor Swiss. <laughs> you lose, loser. Swiss. Now one person got one it right, One person but got not it. saying who. We're not saying who. One person. Swiss. Are you out of your mind? What kind of fucking... That would be a basic guess. Let me guess you also make mushroom Swiss yeah. burger. Oh, yeah. He'd get Swiss. <laughs> Twiff. <laughs> American Sailor Twiff says, are you out of your fucking mind? Havarti. No one's got it. One guy got One it. One guy got and it. And you know what? That guy, I almost think he's watching us. The guy who got it right because... He gets everything right he knows. about us. Everything. I don't know how. Because I don't. It's not like I've given it away. Look at all these people. Uh-oh. The Lunchable Cheese. I like that. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry for screaming. I take this very seriously. Because I swear to God, I'm like, I'm not bullshitting you with this. I want this in all of your lives. It will make your life a hundred... I was happy the whole day after we ate this burger. I was happy the entire day. I was just gonna I say, was high. You I was go high. into like kind of a man. It all happiness so happy. It's almost kind yeah. of also a rage. <laughs> like after you Munster. eat these burgers, you go. Imagine if I was putting Munster on my burger, smoked Gouda. That is what a loser f wannabe <laughs> would pick. Do you understand? And that's why I mean, it's not the most basic stuff. These people are missing something in their brains. No, right. they uh, just don't know. We didn't know any of this until we really studied it. And we're here to help. It's only one guy that got it here today. Only one guy. I don't want to give it away because they're going to go, oh, because they're not going to do it right. Just you know what save I mean? it for when we can explain the full thing. When we've got it our bodies, really is it'll important. be worth it. Just save it. It's so important. And I'm going to give you guys all these tips. I just want to make sure it's done correctly. I really, uh, in this next level marketing, you should be so ashamed of yourself. And then you said Swiss. Wow. I knew it. I knew you didn't have what it takes. <laughs> I knew it. He's screaming now. He's going, what do you put on it? <laughs> You're never going to get it. Please tell us the cheese, says Xander. You know what? I got these burgers here today. Maybe we'll make the video right after the show. Maybe that'll be our lunch. We could do it. We have to do it because we have the leftover meat. Maybe I'll do it. Let's do it. We'll make it after the show and just forgive the buns because they're not perfect. Scars Club only. Perfect. Scars Club only. The video recipe will be up on Scars Club if it goes well. You know, because I might screw it up. Which I'm very afraid to do. I know, yeah. No, you would never screw it up now. You're too good. Secret cheese. Gui Guiere, no. What obscure cheese do you use? Wow, that's next level marketing. His, his mind? Oh, it's the most basic shit ever. 
His mind is so off. It's not obscure. The cheese I use isn't obscure. It's right in front of your face. Every day, you see this cheese. Right in front of your face. And he thinks it must be obscure. That's because your mind doesn't work like mine. All right. <laughs> Here he is, Gordon Ramsay making the worst burger ever. Look at this. Egg inside a mushroom and put this beautiful bacon, egg, mushroom burger together. Nice. Turn over the seasoning. You can see those little bits of butter that. there. Do you have a water? Literally helping to make that, that pate Coke? even more moist. Is there anything in there? Now, once they're seasoned beautifully, again, salt, pepper. I open up the top of the pepper mill to get larger flecks of pepper in there. Okay. Coca-Cola. On. And then again, a little dusting. Of the powder. Look at this next level marketing is back in the chat going chatter. Sorry, bro. You really made yourself look like a complete fool in front of everybody here today. Trying to burn me. This is the most basic shit I've ever heard. Oh yeah. Can't even Swiss. guess the cheese. Swiss and cheddar, he guesses. Wow. Imagine if I use fucking cheddar and I'm making a big deal about it on the show. How much of a f would I be? A loser. Bob Lazar, they'd a call me. Applewood cheddar. <laughs> oh, apple. Could you imagine if I was doing something like that, too? Oh, you think I use cheddar? I use applewood cheddar. <laughs> I, I'm not doing that to you. One guy guessed it. It's so simple. You're all going to think it's gross. But you're wrong. You're wrong. You tried to burn Mike. You got pawned. Yeah. That's what people are saying in the chat. Next level stock dropping rapidly. <laughs> And I just want people to know, okay? I wouldn't bring to you some basic nonsense thing that, you know, these guys, they we have to listen. We started this out by saying we want to be able to share it so bad. Yeah. What a loser. And look what he's saying now. And now you're drinking Jim Beam. More basic shit. Okay. He's getting drunk. That's basic. <laughs> what an asshole. Kill him. Everybody kill him. If Mike said Apple would cheddar, I'd unsubscribe <laughs> from the Scars Club, says I Avery. Yeah. So. Exactly. I would never do that to you. Next level is Gino. <laughs> That's what Cheapest bourbon. Cheapest bourbon. What an idiot. So this guy thinks, oh, you should have Maker's Mark. It's more expensive. That'll make for a better show if he spared some more expense on the whiskey. What a loser. <laughs> Die, they're saying. Treat him like spit. They're saying dox him. <laughs> Give away his credits. Ah, uh, wow. Give away his credits. Jim Beam is a classic. In fact, if you're drinking whiskey that's above Jim Beam, you've got the problem. Okay? You're being a little bit of you're a show-off. You're being a show-off, off and you don't know nothing about booze. People who drink booze don't drink fancy schmancy booze. That's for idiots. Okay? That's for people who got caught up in some marketing scheme. All right? A real man, you drink whatever's there. Mid-grade. <laughs> Maker's Mark is the Ethan Ralph's favorite. It will not make the show better. No, no, no. My credit card is safe for another week. Whew! Someone says. Uh, next level makes videos on Bitcoin. Does he really? You are nothing. You are nothing. They're saying about him. <laughs> Jack Daniels is better. Wow, that is it. This guy's off. He's like the exact opposite of me. Jack Daniels is shit. Jack Daniels is what Fridays works with. The restaurant Fridays, them and Jack Daniels are like this. Jack Daniels chicken strips. Jack Daniels glaze sorry the only person that's in bed with uh jim beam is kid rock <laughs> mike pours hollandaise sauce over a burger never there is nothing foo-foo about what i'm doing with my food uh next level owns a jack daniels shirt probably fruit of the loom is a premier brand barrel aged talk about basic jack daniels yeah come on I bet he thinks Jack Daniels barbecue sauce is bolder than the competitor. <laughs> Kumia drinks Jack. Jack Daniels. Jack, Jack Daniels is what you drink when you think you like Jack and Coke. And then you'd be like, 
uh, would you take a Jim Beam and Coke? They're like, oh, I only drink Jack and Cokes. It's like, you're a trained monkey marketing fag. Okay? Next level marketing. Next level marketing. There you go. Now I like next level. But why would you try to front me on my burger talk? What an idiot. Michael Jordan's dad died from Jack Daniels, they're saying. Bolder than the competitor. Okay, should we show this video here? Are you getting all sick of burgers? After the show, I'm making you guys a burger, okay? Oh, I hope I do good. I hope I do good. We'll set it up. We'll do it. I don't know if we'll do it live. We'll tape it. Tape the whole thing and then put it up on the Scars Club, right? Redbarradio.net slash Scars. Would you like that? I'm so sick. Maybe next level is right. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Okay, here it is. Uh, Gordon Ramsay's burger. Let's just watch this real quick. It's it's Everybody likes burger stuff, right? Here we go. I do. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to lightly brush with literally a dinner and a show oil. there's that'll melt beautifully with oh the, olive oil with all butter. over the burger yeah you need that you would need that if your burger didn't have any fat in it who the fuck is oiling up the outside of their burgers with olive oil a taste that you garlic and olive oil burger mm. a nice italian meatball for a burger that's the last flavor you want on your burger is olive oil olive oil is gross by the way I don't even want to tell you what Next Level Marketing just said because it's going to send you into a rage. Sirloin is the best beef to use on a burger. I think he's just fucking with you, so you got to He's either it. trolling or <laughs> he's over. I just can't. I can't with him anymore. I, now I hope he's trolling. I mean, he might be serious. Next Level, and you know what people do too? They get caught um saying something really stupid and then they'll say something extra stupid to be like i was trolling the whole time you weren't the first stuff you said was 100 percent real now you're going in the world of sirloin to try to oh he got tricked by me the whole time no 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 very very rarely have ever been tricked on this show and uh believe me it's not you're not going to be the uh the guy who does it, trust me. Okay, I can see right through this. I can see right through this here. I thought Mike was just sitting completely still for a minute. Somebody said the uh, stream got fucked up. I know. I up. told them they said it's back for now. Uh oh. No burgers go to the PO box after the show. They're saying there must be a whole batch of bees in there. So, um, what's this guy saying now here? Uh oh, the stream cut. Look at this. Is it back and good? Stream is being funked. Mine hasn't even chopped at all, so I don't know. I don't know. Well, we gotta see. Yeah. Looks fine to me. They're saying it's choppy. I don't know what to do here. Stream is fine for me. Mike, I sent some hamburger meat to the P.O. box a few weeks ago. That's disgusting. Stream's fine. It's back and it's fine. Someone says a little choppy. It's choppy on my end. In and out. Light chop scattered. Mine is 240p Shit. and stuttered. If yours is choppy, try. I'm. On, did you all refresh, I hope? Stream's okay now. A bit choppy. I refreshed and I'm good. Mine's fine now. Okay now. This is all because of that next level marketing guy. I refreshed and it's back. Seems 240 trick up. Chopped again. This is bad. Was better for a minute. Looks good now. There was one chop two minutes ago. It dropped to 720, and it's good. I don't know. Are we good? I feel so sick. Never refresh. Just refreshed, and let's see. It's weird, because ours is perfect. Here. I know. Mine hasn't chopped a single We're watching bit. it uh, perfectly in real time here. It's working great. Uh, I put the live stream in the freezer for 30 minutes, then it started streaming <laughs> smoothly. Yeah, there you go. It's good. Good enough for me. I don't like good enough. So did you hear about that uh, guy, though? What was he saying? Sirloin. <laughs> Sirloin is the best for burgers, he says. Okay, back to Ramsey. Here we go. Lit up. Don't go too high a heat to begin with. Okay, keep it really nice and literally central. Now, that initial... But it, before he said... 
high heat is the most important factor. You need to have the hottest grill your grill could get. And then he says, don't go too high heat. Literally be central. Here. Pepper in there. And okay. then the burgers instantly on. catch on fire. Look. <laughs> yeah. And then again, a little dusting of the powder. Okay. And a lightly brush with a touch That's of That's not lightly. Oil. You're That'll soaking them. Beautifully with the butter. Lit up. Don't go too high a heat to begin with. Okay, keep it really nice Watch this. and literally Burn. central. You know why it's doing that? All that <laughs> olive oil just fell off right into there. So his burgers were on fire at the beginning. Now that initial crackle, okay. That's, that's a man, that's called not being in control of your grill. The grill got away from you. Not a good look. Butter, don't worry about that, okay? Watch this. Don't worry about brush. it. Oh, okay. oh my God, he's pouring more olive oil on the burning burger. <laughs> It's literally what's causing the flames. You literally don't need any oil for a burger. The meat has fat in it. Instantly, when it starts hitting the grill, it melts. It creates its own lubrication. Here. Of olive oil on top. Okay. And let them cook. Now, alongside that, I'm going to take my mushrooms. Mushrooms! Season those mushrooms. Again, salt and pepper. Those burgers Inside. have not gone out, by the way. Large flecks of pepper. Imagine this eating this giant mushroom cap on your burger. <laughs> For what? Only in Britain where you, would you want this giant monstrosity of a mushroom on your burger? Come on. Okay. A nice little glaze of olive oil. That'll help break down the mushroom. A what? These are beautiful mushrooms. And the flavor in these things are incredible. No, they're not. Okay. I want them turned inside out like that. There. I'm there. Now, pull the lid down, get the temperature back up. Now into that the burger's been on the grill for four minutes there on one side. Yep. I mean, a burger takes about two minutes aside tops for a burger that big. If your grill is on the hottest heat like he And claimed. it's flaring up. That burger is ready to be flipped. Now he's got the lid down. I don't know what he's thinking here. Those burgers. Okay. And let that get really nice and hot. Now, my buns. Never underestimate the importance of a great bun, okay? Um, the secret is to make sure, okay, that you do not get that bread soggy. More like olive oil. Of olive oil, salt, pepper. Olive, olive oil is shit. It's got the worst taste. It's got like a funk to it. Olive oil is good if you put olive oil on a plate with some pepper and cheese and you're dipping bread in. That's olive oil. I don't want olive oil mixed with my used butter, folks. We're not in Italy. Here. I mean, in, olive oil is good for a lot of stuff, but not burgers. I don't think so. I think olive oil is fucking shit, man. I'd rather I use don't. vegetable oil than olive oil. I disagree. Oh, no, no, no. Not I mean, me. it definitely depends on what you're making. No. Olive oil is a uh, stupid, stupid but thing. you shouldn't be using it for your main oil if you're cooking something on super Olive oil is heat. the only oil with such a taste to it, and the taste does not go good with anything. That uh, taste of olive oil. I like it. Pasta, Italian-y things. It's good. You don't want the olive oil taste on a burger. No, not on a burger. For yeah, there sure. you go. That's what I said. I said it's good on a lot of things, but not a burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're making burgers. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I don't want that olive oil taste on a burger. A green oil? You know why that... <laughs> it's green, folks. That's an olive. Okay? Here. I'll toast the buns. That protects the actual burger, and stops the whole thing from becoming soggy. Turn that around, and toast. By you the way- You didn't even put that burger flat on the grill, it's no. like- By the way, restaurants aren't using olive oil. Only home cooks are using olive oil. You know what restaurants use? Vegetable oil, mixed with butter. They ain't using no olive oil at these restaurants. People think olive oil is on everything. It's not. It's a home cook amateur hour thing to use olive oil. Oh, I got the extra virgin. It's got a scent to it, folks. Less olive oil. You know what I would rather use? Lard. Crisco. <laughs> really? I, I like that. I'm fully with you on this one, you know, honestly. You don't know. You don't know. You all no. think you know. Trust me. Trust me. But you use olive oil all the time. Yeah, it's true. But, uh, you're, try you're making this up in your head right now. Olive oil is uh, great. It's just not good for burgers. It's not good on steaks? No, because it's it Okay, burns. what is it good on? 
um, cooking thing. Like if you're sauteing something, like nope. uh, broccolini. No, nope. avocado oil is the best. Yeah. And then uh, I just use vegetable. You wouldn't know the difference. Why would you want an olive toned scent? Because it tastes good. Instead of a neutral oil scent because with no taste. Good. No, no, no. I want my cooking oils uh, as a lubricant. It, nothing else. I don't want them adding flavor. Not at all. But av- avocado oil is a good option, too. I agree. Avocado oil is great. And I like a cheap vegetable oil. The store brand. Generic. Cheap. I want a bottle this big. three ninety five For this much oil. You go, is this good for you? No! Yeah, I guess Italian stuff is mostly what yeah. you use olive oil for. Olive oil is good. You want a nice cold pasta salad? Yeah, here's some olive oil for you. You want to make a salad dressing? Fine. Yeah, of course, use olive oil. Yeah, there but you go. But I would say avocado oil. No. Superior. I don't want that taste of that olive. You know what? Most olive oil, we don't even realize we're used to a rancid taste. Real olive oil, the good stuff, doesn't have that rancidity. Any olive oil that you buy in the store has almost a rancid You have to get the good kind. The cheap taste. kind has sure. a rancid taste, for yeah. sure. But most people are buying that cheap kind. They're buying the bolivani. That's fair. Bolivani! And it's just, come on, a green oil? What are you, Coffee a turtle? Coming over. I'll flip that burger. <laughs> You'll see. Beautiful. Look at this. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Look, get that soft butter. Okay. Nice backyard burger here. Lightly brush that butter on there. That's going to give the pate a really nice caramelization. Nope. And the secret behind these pates is do not keep on flipping pâtés. them, okay? The more you flip them, okay, the more they're going to break. But get that sear on there. Really important. Now, the mushrooms. Have a look at this, okay? I'm grilling these mushrooms beautifully. No, okay. they're burnt to a crisp. And you can see that. That shrinkage now starting to take place, but the good news is they are piping hot, okay? That's not good. So, Look it's- at that. That is completely charred, crispy. Now, I've never eaten a mushroom grilled like this, so I don't even know what it's supposed like to mushrooms. be like. But is it supposed to be a hard chip that crumbles and turns into ash when you eat it? I don't know. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just quickly... Watch this. Move my burger over. Why? To there. He don't know That's what he's nice doing. Juicy. He's coming up with this as he goes. To rest. Now he's putting the burgers up there. So they've been cooking for about six minutes per side over flames. They're done. They're gray. <laughs> I know. It's been so long. Now he's putting them on the upper rack. By the way, if you have a grill, that upper rack, you should take that off the day you get the grill. That is an amateur hour move to put things on that upper little shelf. I take that thing off. I don't use it. I used it once for cowboy grilled cheese. <laughs> Remember that? Because I was copying a cowboy Kent Rollins video. It wasn't good. But that little rack up there, that is a fool's rack. They'll continue cooking. But look. They'll continue cooking. That is piping hot there. Okay, okay that's not. You get your egg. It's on a grill. This, this burger is going to go up look a different this. level. He's taking crack an egg. egg. And literally crack that on top of that mushroom. Look. Crack. And that mushroom is just turning into pure carbon arc. And then very carefully, lightly season those eggs. On. Alongside that, I'm going to stick my bacon. Okay. Now watch it. Okay, here we go. He's got some bacon. And he's got UK bacon, which means they closed their eyes when they butchered it. UK <laughs> bacon is nuts. Have you ever been to UK and seen their bacon? I have not, actually. Our bacon comes in these nice, beautiful strips. UK bacon looks like somebody put a blindfold on, took two knives, and did the spins as fast as they can at a, at a, uh, the belly of a pig. It's insane. It's ripped. It looks like it's shredded. Every piece is a different shape. One piece is long and it's thin, insane. and then the next piece is like Canadian bacon. And One round. piece is this <laughs> wide, and then this thin there. I mean, it cooks terribly. Now, he's going to throw bacon on a grill turned up on high with the flames coming out. This bacon just burns. Watch this. Look at this. This is a fool's move. Now. Watch this. Look at the bacon. Bacon. Get that nice and crispy. Watch. 
It's going to ignite instantly. Look at that. And what is that strip he just put on exactly. by Exactly. Look at that. UK bacon. You okay? It's Look completely at that. on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks good. And then he, it's like you could cut and redo the bacon. I like know. you could just cut. There's edits in this video. You could stop, turn the grill to low, and redo the bacon. Obviously, it shouldn't all ignite. Okay? There's no reason to make bacon on the grill. Also, someone says this is madness. There goes all the fat. That ain't coming off the grill. Sorry. I mean, everybody knows you want to make grilled bacon. There's a trick to it. You skewer the bacon. Okay. You put it over low heat or an indirect zone. You're constantly flipping. It. And even then, you have to be like watching it every second. Watching going, it every second. You don't want that flame hitting your bacon. Okay. That's going to be, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to be acrid. Here we go. Yes, sir. No, not yes, sir. No, don't Ooh. try to cover up. Look at this. He's losing control of his grill. Beautiful. Look, people are saying, I can't believe what I'm watching. This is a professional chef. That was like he knew that it was burning and he just closed the grill in a panic and went. Excellent. Yes. Do you see that? He goes, ah, beautiful. And then closes the grill <laughs> as the whole thing catches fire. What? Oh, yes, sir. Beautiful. Yes. Woo. And he's obviously moving the bacon to what he thinks is a cool zone. It's the same zone. He's moving the flaming bacon over to another side where it's flaming even more. And then he goes, yes, sir. And then just, eh, I guess I'll shut that grill. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. This is a watch, they're saying. It is. I People was in know. shock when I saw this. Your food isn't supposed to catch fire. Now, I will say this. After a reverse sear, I will allow flame to hit meat for a sear. A quick but sear. But that's only for like for 30 steak. seconds. 30 second quick flame sear. I actually like that. I don't find fire hitting meat to always be bad. I'm not one of these purists uh, from Argentina who thinks fire can never hit meat. I don't actually like that. I almost like a kiss of fire every now and then for my sear. Uh, it gives me some uneven, very surprising taste. But you don't want your bacon on fire. He picked up the bacon. It's flaming as he moves it to the other side, which is just as high and ignites just as much. Here, watch this again. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> you couldn't even look us in the eye as you said that. <laughs> look at that. Shout outs to Ramsey. He paved the way once. Oh, oh. oh that's sick. <laughs> this is what Kumia drinks Coke. It's, it's good. The best drink. It's good. Orange, that's an orange drink. People don't know that. Cola is an orange drink. Think about that. Uh, let's see. Gordon Ramsay is canceled. Now, he's been messing up a lot. We're going to show you more. He also messed up with the Old Town Road guy. We'll show yes. you that video after this. I was... Uh, I'm not an anti-Ramsay guy. I'm actually... I was a giant fan of Ramsay. Same. I supported him up until about last year where he started losing it because he's not letting himself evolve. He's not letting himself learn new cooking he thinks whatever he learned 35 years ago is the way it should be now cooking is ever evolving it's always changing and our tastes are changing as well there is no right way there's only right now it's just like fashion there is only right now so let's watch this look at him panicking as the grill gets away from him yes sir right yes sir Whew. no Whoops. Now. It's weird how chefs kind of don't know anything about barbecue. It's weird. Like Malcolm Reed is better at making barbecue than like a, a great chef. He really is. It's like two different skill sets almost. And chefs don't think they need to really learn about barbecue. Barbecue is like an afterthought for chefs. But I feel like barbecue is such... There's so much technique in barbecue. There's so much trial and error to make that perfect barbecue. And barbecue could have more oomph to it than technical chef stuff most of the time. Most of the time, barbecue almost tastes better than what chefs are doing. And chefs don't think they need to learn about barbecue. Here we go. How do I like dressing this burger? Look at this, even Danny Woodward. He says exactly right. Chefs can't grill. 
And that's something. There you go. They only know pan techniques. Enough with your pan. What are you, a girl? <laughs> Men don't work in a pan. <laughs> uh, for the same reason you don't see Malcolm Reed cooking risotto, you shouldn't take barbecue advice from Ramsey. It's true. Although this is grilling, not barbecue. Okay. You're not going to get into that today? <laughs> take that. Sriracha. Two thirds Sriracha. 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 Sriracha and mayo. What is this? Tim's cooking tips? Okay. From there. I'm going to usually dress the bun nicely. Okay. And this is where they start sort of going to a different level. No. Dressing on top. Level's fine. Does sriracha and taste? Look like, at his I buns. love sriracha. So yeah. I put it on everything, and I would never put that on a burger in a no. million years. No. You know, these people keep trying to fancify the burger instead of get down to why we like a burger. There's, it's simple. It's a very simple concept with this burger thing. And people think, oh, I got to keep dressing it up. No, no, no. You're going in the wrong direction here. I take this very seriously. Now, his buns are unevenly toasted. You've got half burnt, half dry. Terrible, 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 terrible. Now, I like a burnt bun. I will say all of my over-the-fire cooking uh, that I do, I like a char. I'm not afraid. I'll take, uh, I like my bun with some black on it. I like it all. I want everything to have a little black on it. To me, that's rustic. That's what gives it its flavor. I like that. So I'm not against that. I'm not saying they're burnt, but you don't want black on one side and then pale on the other, like Gordon Ramsay here, who should be a phenomenal, perfect. When I watch Gordon Ramsay make a burger, I should be blown away. Shake Shack should not be making a better burger than Gordon Ramsay, but they are. Here. Dressing underneath, okay? Always keep the base towards you. The okay. base. Another I'll British word. I've got some the nice is full. fresh arugula. Arugula! Oh, I didn't realize uh, a woman was here. A bitch. You know who likes arugula? A bitch. Wow. Arugula is a bitch's leaf. So that's why whenever I go, let's get arugula, yep. you're discussing. Arugula is a woman's plant. Arugula was made for Allegra Shaw. Now you like arugula. I it's love peppery, arugula. right? Not me. It's delicious, but I probably arugula. I wouldn't put it on a burger. Oh, arugula. I'm a woman who's a bitch. <laughs> oh my God. I'm a bitch. Arugula. It's good. My wife loves that shit. <laughs> just... The worst taste. Arugula is the worst. Listen, I love it. A bitch's leaf. LOL. <laughs> a simple weed. Hey, I ate arugula. Listen, I eat arugula. I do. But this is a woman's food. Arugula is more of like you make it with a little steak salad to have on the side. Someone says, I love it. Sue me. Listen, I didn't say I don't like arugula. <laughs> I said it's a bitch's weed. <laughs> uh, arugula has no place on a hamburger. Sorry. Amen. It doesn't. You know where arugula has its place? In a fee-fee-foo-foo, -foo, I'm going to fight with my wife type of breakfast. I eat arugula <laughs> with breakfast sometimes. Never heard of it, someone says. What? Every time there's arugula on my food, I think I'm tasting something rotten. Get the fuck out of here with your arugula, fancy boy, they're saying. <laughs> arugula. Arugula is a garnished lettuce. Okay. I ordered an arugula salad once and vowed never again. <laughs> Normal people have no idea what arugula is. It is what bitter, are but it is good. It's fine. Okay, it's, it's not good. on a burger, though. We're not talking about a burger. No, of That'd course be like, not on a burger. Imagine having barbecue ribs with some arugula. On it. <laughs> of course. I we mean, all come on. Agree. We all this agree is insane. On not on a burger ever as a base for a meat, a lining between meat and a plate. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there please. you go. No, He's no, right no. about that. Sorry. Yeah, right. No, he's right. I'm now, let me guess. Woodward. What is the meat? Lamb? I love lamb. I know. I like classic American fare. None of this stuff with arugula or lamb 
or I would say that I love classic American fare even more than you do because you want to have it for every single meal. I yes. prefer to have it like once in a while and then you appreciate it even more because yeah. you mix it in with the no, arugulas. Listen, the I'm being fast and pastas. hard with my rules. These rules don't exist. They're more for flair. Listen to this one. Someone says there shouldn't even be lettuce on a burger. No. I 100% agree. No lettuce. Agree. You do not need lettuce on a burger. It took me a while to come to that one. This by is the what way, should be on a burger. I'm and I'll it. tell you, I'm getting closer to my recipe. You'll see my recipe. This is what should be on a burger ketchup, mustard, onion, pickle. That's it. Cheese. Ketchup, mustard, onion, pickle, cheese. Anything more, you're being a, cr- a creative. Your creativity stinks. Ketchup, mustard, onion, pickle and one type of cheese only that i haven't revealed that i will reveal later today during my video that's it lettuce on a turkey club for sure if you're putting lettuce on your burger and tomatoes insane uh doesn't even make sense now you're not even tasting the burger anymore you're tasting a cold wet crisp That's a thing. It's a different sandwich. thing. It's a different thing. Okay? Go eat a turkey BLT if you want lettuce and tomato. Exactly. Red, white, or yellow onion, someone asked. I'm not going to tell you yet. Picture <laughs> Mike's Burger. Picture of Mike's Burger. Let's see. You know, they're making fun of me now if they tasted it. I know. Oh, please. If they tasted what I'm giving you, they'd be on their knees asking me what they could do. Begging. Begging. And I'm 100% sure of it. Mike forgot he told us Munster already. If I used Munster, I would take a gun... I'd shove it in my wife's mouth. I think you're thinking of Brian Redban, okay? Nobody uses Munster. Why do you think of Brian Redban? Because he said he added Munster to his Wendy's. Munster. (laughs) I'd rather die. I don't experiment with cheeses. I want the recipe. I want the technique. I'll make it for you. I'm going to make a video. But if you don't like this burger, you got to quit Red Bar. You're done. You're banned. This is the only burger I'll allow. Munster. Wow, that's fucked. Ha ha, nice callback. Thanks. Uh, you're going to feed us every day at the Red Bar Compound, right, Mike? It's a joke that bombed, sir. <laughs> Lettuce and tomato should be allowed for only the classic burger taste. It's okay. Nope. Stop, guys. You've all been led down the wrong path. It's not your fault. You've been led down wrong paths. We're going to show you the perfect burger. I'm 100%. Jules, tell them. I, I can't. I don't even there want to say is it no. anymore because you can't talk about this burger for three hours. There, you're we've been hype practicing. It up too much. We've been practicing for but 10 it is years. That good. There is no hype. You taste it and it's euphoria. It's euphoria. Trust me. We've had every burger. We've been focusing on this burger for so long. I've invested every skill, technique, everything everybody's ever said has been applied. I am so confident in this burger that I could make a million dollars in a summer (laughs) if I opened up a restaurant called Mike's Burgers. Called Mike Makes. Mike Makes. One thing, this burger. I am so confident in this burger that I will risk my life Over its taste, right? He would risk his life. I would risk my life. If you guys don't like this burger, you can shoot Mike right in the head with a BB. (laughs) Has Mike named the burger? It's interesting. uh, We should name the burger. Now, this is very uh, similar to a lot of other burgers. Mike, uh, what's take... What's Mike's take on grass-fed beef? I am uh, against it. We're over it. it. We're against it. Doesn't taste as good. You know, Danny Woodward is getting into this health kick phase of his life where he thinks he likes arugula and grass-fed beef. He's trying to slim down, I understand. But the health kick food is almost anti-food food. 
Health Kick food is bad. You got to go for real American flavors here. Grass-fed beef is disgusting. Now, pasture-raised beef, finished with grain, fine. Grass-fed beef, bad. Uh, Mike called Woodward fat. No, I didn't. But I saw he was doing a health kick on uh, Facebook. So now his mind is all on healthy ingredients, organic. That's the way to go. I've been there. I've done that. It is actually the wrong way if you're looking for pleasure. If you're looking for health, you're right there. You want pleasure, grass-fed beef is not going to be for you. It's very dry. Uh, it's uh, it's off. Grass-fed beef is bad. Uh, Michaela no, he's Peterson. not getting mad at you for asking a question. He's just answering the Who? question. Who's saying that? Woodward said a guy can't ask a question, huh? Oh, my God. No, what is Woodward being a... Uh, accept a question Oh, from my God. Woodward. Is Woodward getting a little sensitive? Wow. I thought Woodward was a killer. No health kick. I sleep in a hyperbaric chamber. No, I saw <laughs> Woodward was on a goddamn health kick the other day. He was talking about how he did a three-day fast. He's trying all these techniques. He's going through it. The health kick will save you. It's a great technique. I wish I was on a health kick. I'm on a carnival kick. Yeah. I eat carnival food. That is what I do. And five of it a day. You're on the right path. I'm on the wrong path, but it's a... Funner path. It's funner. <laughs> okay. It's completely wrong. But, uh, yeah, I like a carnival food. I like it... As sinful as it gets. That's what I'm at. We could be back to health in another year. This Woodward is just said, I did a three-day fast. It ruled. That's fine. That's fine. I am not in a fast, healthy lifestyle right now. This is the summer of indulgence when it comes to food. Okay? We're talking about, oh, he's, uh, he's, uh, Mike is so indulgent, he's picking up whipped cream. When he's at the grocery store. I'm adding whipped cream to my coffees in the morning. I'm going... And A little cinnamon. bit of cinnamon. Ooh, it's good. I'm on an indulgence kick, not a health <laughs> kick. So when I make my coffee in the morning, black as fuck, strong as hell, I take it out. I take some ready whip. I shake it. Then a little... Uh, I just like how it looks. It's not even for the taste. I like how it looks. And I'm putting... Cinnamon over the uh, ready whip. That's where I am. I'm at right now. You don't make your own whipped cream? Just lost some respect. No, actually making your own whipped cream is worse. We've tried this. Does Mike eat cotton candy? Cotton candy is the cheese I'm using on my burger. He says, I get exactly what you're saying, though, Mike. It's my summer of shred. Next summer will be my indulgence summer. We've all been through it. Of course. Respect. I just hate to see that somebody thinks that actually uh, being thin and healthy is the way to go. It's not. I want to be like Malcolm Reed. Big and fat and disturbing. Big, big guy. You know what I've been eating every day? Uh, this is what I eat in between meals. A buttery, beautiful old-fashioned grilled cheese <laughs> nothing worse than that <laughs> so i'll make breakfast right after breakfast i make a quick grilled cheese then i eat lunch right after lunch i make a quick grilled cheese have an ice cream some ready whip then i'll have dinner then i'll have a quick grilled cheese this is the life i'm talking about right now okay uh mike do you like truffle stuff seems like a fool's version of indulgent to me i hate truffle stuff you're right on the nose <laughs> truffle is disgusting i hate truffle fries the taste of truffle i don't put truffle on anything anytime they mess with truffle on stuff i go yucky i'm an american guy mike sprinkles ap rub on top of his whipped cream coffee mike only eats truffle salt it's nuts i hate truffle stuff truffle is disgusting and most of it is truffle 
flavored oil, right? It's not even real like truffle. Like 99% of the truffle that you eat is fake. Like anytime you go to a cheap restaurant and they have like truffle fries or truffle mashed potatoes or whatever, it's a fake imitation truffle. Uh, so maybe really real, maybe real, maybe real truffle is good. Truffle is good, but I doubt but I don't any need of it. us have ever had it. I don't need it. it. I'm not impressed. I actually get physically uh, alarmed when I see someone say, oh, our fries are truffle. Okay. Yeah. 2004 called. They want their menu idea back okay not excited it's not excited basically at all. having truffle fries is like having yam fries on your menu now danny woodward's here he goes how often does little geo eat mike's cooking tell him every day tell him <laughs> Literally he loves every my food piece although he's confused because he thinks i make the beneful dog food as well he doesn't <laughs> understand that not everything is home cooked so he goes how come you make such great hamburgers but then also you make Beneful, which is a rather dry. <laughs> Shout outs. Right. Mike, I love you, but you're dead wrong about this. Thought you were a foodie. Wait, we're I'm dead not wrong about truffle? I'm not worried about it. Listen, people are getting so confused out there. People are so confused about what they think. They hear truffle. They think better. They hear Munster. They think better. They've been so confused for so long. I am not even worried about them thinking I'm wrong. I know. So I don't sweat it. I go, listen, it's going to take them a number of years to understand what I'm talking about here. Truffle fries, bad. Munster, Gouda. It's all shit. You've been tricked. You've been tricked. You've been persuaded by the wrong guys. It's okay. I don't get offended by it. I see them. I know what they think. Doesn't bother me. They want to eat fake truffle oil flavoring? Fine. Go for it. That pungent crap ruins a fry. Little Geo sounds like an old G. Truffle oil is too rich. Use a drop only. Uh, then go sniff out some truffles, boy. Remember when Mike tried to teach Hez about jeans? That's coming from Torm Delgado, who looks like a freaking nerd every day of his life. You know, so if you want to listen to him, listen to him. Guy's got fucking glasses on. I'm pretty sure that he's taking your side, saying oh, that the people aren't oh, well, listening to you when they should be listening to oh. you, and they're wrong. So no, sorry I don't think about so. that, Torm. I don't think so. Can we talk about Xander selling shirts? Uh-oh. It's a trick. This is a trick? Xander doesn't sell shirts. That's Alex Gross you're thinking about. The place <laughs> I used to eat at changed their classic nachos and started making them with ruffle chips and gorgonzola. Holy cow! LOL, poor Torm. I didn't mean it, Torm. Yeah. I didn't mean it, Torm. Guys, I feel You're a little... lashing out at a lot of guys well, today. Well, <laughs> this food stuff, I really... You know, you watch people, they've been led down such a such a faulty path by some of these food guys. There's only a few food guys that I uh, agree with. Guga. Guga's pretty good. Malcolm Reed's pretty good. Uh, you know, there's a few food guys. A lot of food people have led you down the wrong path. I see it. I watch you go down the wrong path. Xander is an Alex. Xander sells bitches, burgers, fungus, whatever I follow my heart. I mean, truffle oil stuff is so played out. That's such a, like a old school fad that is over. We found one place that still uses truffle oil. And it was horrible. Remember that? Stinks. Che Fratelli's Italiano. They thought that we would want a steak basted and fried in truffle oil. It tasted like garbage. Truffle oil? Disgusting. Disgusting. You don't have to listen to me. Someone asked, why should we listen to me? Don't listen to me. Keep eating tr fake truffle oil from the store. For $49 an ounce, thinking that you're a sophisticano. Do it. That burger recipe uh, better not be similar to Guga's. Absolutely not. <laughs> I would never follow Guga's. Guga does not know about burgers. Guga is more of a skirt steak guy. He's a uh, Colombian, right? What is he? Yeah. The Argentinian only person who knows about a burger Brazilian? is an Americana guy. Like me. I'm Mike America. I have picky American kid tastes. 
And that's what you want in a hamburger. A picky American kid. A privileged kid. I don't know. I didn't know there was such a thing as truffle oil, says Danny Woodward. Imagine being a and accusing me of fool's behavior, says Xander. Uh, what if we like truffle? I mean, most people love cheese. You don't. What if we like truffle? I don't believe you do. I don't think you've ever even had real truffle. You've just had fake truffle oil and you think that you like it. Uh, Brazilian, maybe. What does Alex Gross know about burgers? Zip. <laughs> Nada. Uh, ha ha, Xander, Mike, America, great. I wish I was Guga's nephew. Yeah, that spoiled fuck. He's got. He, he gets it all. Do you ever see when he's like trying something and being a little asshole and Guga's getting like irritated Guga's with like, him? Oh. <laughs> and Guga's oh. trying so hard to be nice, yeah. but his nephew's being a little Seriously. fucking bitch. You know, uh, Alex Gross is the worst guy. It turns out there's no way. <laughs> oh, no, no. Truffle butter. Uh, if you yeah. like truffle, fine. I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? Hey, you know what? If you have done all the work and studied all the truffles and you believe in your heart that you know yeah. that truffle is amazing, you shouldn't have any problem with us yeah. saying it's bad. You should be able to be exactly. confident in your own convictions. So don't get offended. Just stick with it if you know you're right. Uh, truffle oil is repulsive. I mean, there's a reason why everyone's not doing it. It's not because of the expense. <laughs> it was the only people who do it are creepy Italian restaurantes that don't know what they're doing. Nobody is using truffle oil anymore. It's just not a thing. Uh, here's Gordon Ramsay. He's going to finish off his burger. Let's look at this. A lot of heated debate over cooking techniques here. A lot of people... They don't want to let go to what they think was the best. I let go to things every day. I want to let you know that. I could have a technique that I was 100% about yesterday, but I'll learn something new today. I'll throw everything out the window. People go, oh, I thought truffle was good. I'm holding on to this for dear life. No one will tell me it's bad. That must mean I've made mistakes. Yes, you have made mistakes. Allow those to be made what counts is growing. Do this with everything. I mean, how many times did I make a steak the certain way and then I made it the new way? I go, oh, the old way was crazy. I was so stupid. Exactly. Don't be afraid to change your mind. That's kind of what I was trying to say. People if I are went so over afraid. to that guy's house and he was like, I love truffles and served me an amazing truffle And then truffle it was good. Thing, we would I love would it. Change my we would mind. go, wow, we're into truffles. I would but admit it. The fact of the matter is. This is just the State of the Union on July 8th, 2019. Yeah. So it don't get offended. You know, and a lot of people like to stick, like I said, there is no fact for food. It is ever evolving because your taste should be evolving. Okay. It's like anything else. And it should. And you'll notice it. And a lot of people go, and I see this on FFF. Family Food Fight on ABC. Have you seen Family Food Fight? It's awful. It's three families picked to compete against each other for the best meals, and they'll stick by that family tradition, even though it's not up to par in a 2019 time. It's like they've got it built in that this is the best way. Your best. You should always be wanting better. Your best. You should be going, how do I perfect it the next time? And then every three months, you should be looking back and going, oh, wow, that burger I made three months ago was a joke compared to the burger I have today. And it should always be moving, moving, moving until you're at the Taste Pavilion. That's what I encourage everybody to, to follow today. So when I say I've got these tastes, these aren't like some sort of know-it-all, I think. That's what everyone else that's is doing. That's just what we know now. That's what we know now, but I'm telling you the effort, the thought, and the... Uh, the the growing and the evolving that has gone into this. I know in my heart that no one here, at least no one here, there are people out there, but no one here has thought about the human burger <laughs> in the way I have. That I can almost In the guarantee. details <laughs> of the burger. I mean, it's a psychotic obsession with the human burger. And I know no one here has given it that much time. Like People go, saying, what does Mike do when he's not doing the show? Burgers. <laughs> Thinking about burgers. And it's the littlest, slightest, little subtlest change. And I need you to believe me. 
and they would believe me. If I had Kevin Fergakis come over here and take that bite, I think we literally he would have pass to... out. It would be like a preacher holding the guy as he passes out. <laughs> yeah. People would think it was his setup. It's a burger baptism. Yes. You would see Kevin pass out and I go, oh, Lord, save him. I only wish you were all in a line up to my porch right now while I was frying them up and giving you them and I was also cooking them each consistently and perfectly and you were all trying them going, oh my God, we are so sorry, Mike. Here's money, here's gifts, here's gold. I don't know what else I could say to convince you. Maybe you can convince them. It's not about ego. I don't want to be known as the burger guy. I want everyone to be able to make this burger. I want this to be the burger that you get at every restaurant. I don't want... It's not about me. It's about... We have been denied the best burger our entire lives. And it's right here. If they right had this here. burger at every restaurant, it's we right wouldn't here. even need to be talking about we this We wouldn't right need now. to do Red Bar. You wouldn't need entertainment. <laughs> you wouldn't need shows. You wouldn't need distraction. You would have this. Please believe me. Please. <laughs> Please. Okay. Uh, I want to show you this. Gordon Ramsay is going to destroy this burger. Watch this. Here he is. And because of the fatty richness of this burger, sure. it doesn't need dressing. So I put the arugula on there to help protect the bread and give that nice little peppery flavor. Yeah, look at this. Ramsey's burgers have been on the grill for like 34 minutes at this point. Yeah. It's true. Now watch how tall this thing gets. Now from there, take your tomatoes. Tomatoes! And slice them nice and thinly. Ugh. That's not thin. That is thick. That's thick. And look. Oof, that is literally thick. <laughs> look at that. On top, keeping that nice and round. Really important keeping to that nice and round? It's three Every tomatoes layered on top of each other. Keeping that nice and round. What? Why don't you take one slice out of the middle of the tomato and put it on there? Three overlapping, you're creating height. Every step of the way. Beautiful. Really important you get that ready before the burgers come out. Now, my cheese. You now, look at this guy. Next level marketing would be right if he was if he was saying this to any other human being in the planet. He'd be right. You got it. I taught him. him all this. He goes, this is more annoying than saying, my mama makes the best spaghetti. Well, that's a trope that I introduced you to. Okay. I was the one who pointed out, oh, my mom makes the best spaghetti and how lame that is. So you learn that from me. You're using it against me, but you don't know. Uh, it would be because what are the odds that some Italian fuck makes the best spaghetti? Please. This would be anybody else. If Joe Matarese said he made the best burger, I would say, yes, please, God. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, why is it that Next Level Marketing does not trust me on this? Don't you see I'm spilling my heart here? He's just trying to make you mad because every time he says something, you spend 10 minutes getting mad. So his trolling is working. He's not trolling. He's a huge fan, he said. <laughs> he said I he think, was sorry. I mean, he's obviously just trying to nope. make you mad at no, this no, point, no. I would say. My I'm, opinion. Spilling, I'm spilling my guts. To not believe me at this point would be to not not uh to not believe me at this point would be to undermine my existence yes. it would be to say i don't even believe in you as a person please trust me please i beg of all of you this is blind faith some of you might need to, uh, to access blind faith in order to trust me here next level marketing i beg of you now, where do you live next level marketing? Because I'm, uh, remember when people didn't believe me that American Eagle underwear were the best underwear. So what did I do? I went out to the mall the next day and I bought my boys four pairs of underwear, some medium, some small, some large. Now, I'm about to ship those underwear to those boys this week to show them that I'm not just spouting stuff out the mouth. I really believe this, and it's tried and tested, and I've gone through a lot of trial and error to get to this point here. Let's say next level marketing. Where do you live? What if I came to his house, made him one of these burgers, put my money where my mouth is? Would you accept that offer? I mean, I'm really serious about this, folks. Man. Man. All right, Gordon Ramsay burger. Wait till you see the height. 
You thought the Twin Towers were tall? These are taller. Watch this. Here it comes. Start getting ready with oh. that cheese. You can see. Look at this. So the burgers have been sitting on that upper rack. It's uh, 500 degrees it's like, in this close. This on. could be 550 degrees in there. So the burgers have cooked about six minutes per side over a lit flame. I mean, they've been on fire. That cooked them to well done. Now he's got them sitting on that upper rack, 550, 600 degrees. You're talking about a four burner grill. This is probably 68,000 BTUs total on this whole grill. He's got the thing down. He's got bacon burning. He's got mushroom caps burning. We're about 600, 650 degrees. Those burgers are dry. Now he's covering them with what? Monster? What kind of cheese? This is how Next Level wants to make a burger. Here. Let's come out. Now, my cheese. Start getting ready with that cheese. You can see the burgers are getting really nice and done. Look. Start They're getting melt. really nice Jeez, and done. Over that incredible burger. The bacon. We'll take the bacon off. Okay? Look at this bacon. And then literally just cut that up. Okay, Literally, so. Oh my God! That look is at like this. the most disgusting. So bacon this is I've ever what seen. happens <laughs> when you burn bacon. It's not crispy. It's burned and soggy. So if you try this, throw some bacon on the grill over high heat. This is what'll come out. It's all kind of just burned and mushy. It would be like if you you took a piece of deli ham and just kind of lit it with a bic lighter on the ends. It would be like that. So that's what his bacon is. Look at that. Look at that pile of bacon. And you can see when he cuts it, there's no crisp. I like my bacon crispy and chewy. Crispy and chewy. The outside is a little crisp. The inside is a little chewy. I don't like it when it's a cracker chip that crumbles. I don't like it when it's too mushy. I like that mix. Here's his bacon, which is a gooey butt burnt, which is, it's weird. There's no crisp. But it is burnt here. Okay. Watch. And then literally just cut that up. Okay. So hold that bacon together. Look at that. Oh, and you can bacon. tell that's not. None of it's good. You can tell it doesn't even look like bacon. The color's all off. It's just a burned color. Up nicely. Gray. He Get knows. Really nice and crispy. No, it's not crispy. And then from there, I want to sprinkle some of that chopped bacon. On that Ooh, it looks like mushrooms. So this is a really nice crispy oh God, bacon. That looks Look at that. Base with a crispy bacon. It looks like it looks you cut like a roast beef. Yeah, it really does. Really gross. And again, he started out with that UK blend, that UK bacon, where it doesn't matter what it looks like, right? It's just strips ripped. He's panicking. It's yeah. I believe he's panicking. Woodward's got it right. Ramsey seems to be almost in a manic state knowing that this is, but he's like trying to cover it up. He's like, just cover it up with confidence, right? Keep talking about how beautiful and uh, perfect it is. Maybe no one will notice. Here we go. Topping. Now for the exciting part. Look at those eggs. First off, lift my burger. Uh, this guy, Sit Tenderizer down. 12 in the chat. Everyone ignore him. Uh, he is a bad faith actor. He knows nothing about what he's talking about. Tenderizer 12 is trying to get my attention. Now, he hasn't gotten my attention in the way he wants. But I need to everyone, everyone ignore him. Spit on him. Treat him like shit. He don't know. He don't know. Ignore him He thinks this completely. Ramsey burger is the best burger. Yes. He just texted me and told yes. me Ramsey's burger is In the a best private burger. chat, he goes, wow, you're dissing Gordon Ramsey. His burger is obviously good. I, I like, love okay. mushrooms on a burger. He makes his bacon that way. So everybody see him. This tenderizer 12 in the chat, that's a bad faith actor. Okay? You know what that is? Go Google Tim Pool. He'll tell you what a bad faith actor is. That's what it is. Tenderizer is a new account for sure. Give him the chair. Tenderizer, you are nothing, they're saying. It's true. Don't ever listen to him. He is nothing. Nothing. Uh, Mike, who grills a better patty, Ramsey or Sean Baker? Yeah, well, yeah, we we're going to show you this after. Here's Dr. Sean Baker. Here's his patties. 
Now, Tenderizer, we caught that Tenderizer guy liking this post earlier. That's why we're in this heated I thing. Know. So that guy, Tenderizer, in the chat, I was going to bring this up after, but he started barking at me. The reason this Tenderizer guy is in here today, there was this post. Look at this. All right? Example A. Or uh, what do they call it? Exhibition B. Here it is. Sean Baker, look at this. Now, everybody knows that these burgers are bad. So this guy, Tenderizer, he found Red Bar from this thing. I wrote in here, look what I wrote. Here, let's find my comment. I go, this is insulting. Not only to Thousand Hills, blah, 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 who made the burgers, uh, but to everyone on Instagram. These patties look like absolute garbage. You'd think with all this optimizing of your body and mind, you'd be smart enough to see that this looks disgusting. Now, this is a carnivore guy. He's friends with Michaela Peterson. This tenderizer guy was in this group, <laughs> and he saw that I shit on these burgers. He's been at me for months saying, oh, what should they look like? Hockey pucks? I go, ugh. So this is what the tenderizer guy thinks is a good burger. He liked this picture. It's like Alex Gross liking Piranha's picture. <laughs> so that tenderizer guy in the chat? Yeah. Tenderizer 12 is Alex Gross, someone said. Yeah. That tenderizer guy was caught liking this post. I made fun of him. And now he's coming back saying, oh, Mike knows nothing. Wow. So tenderizer. And tenderizer's fuming right now. <laughs> After because being he was exposed. exposed. Yeah, exposed here. So now you know, almost every guy who comes at me in this chat here, when you see him, always second guess them. Because it's usually because I started something with them, they're offended, they're coming back at me. So always take that into mind when you see a guy saying this, go, oh, what must have happened? And Tenderizer, look at Tenderizer goes, really? Look at him, he's furious. Look at him in the chat. He just private messaged me and asked if you would stop talking shit about him on the show because he's really? so embarrassed. Really? Yep. Tenderizer is in the chat. I just love Sean Baker, please. I was just trying to stick up for Holy my Holy fuck. Sean. Look was... at him. He's flipping out in the chat. This is what Tenderizer thought was good. I mocked him for it, and now he's coming at me saying, why should we trust Mike? That is bad faith acting. So I had to expose him today. This is what Tenderizer thought was good. So, I mean, those aren't that bad, right? Just burger meat. I hope that guy's kidding, too. Look at that. <laughs> this is what Tenderizer thinks is a good burger. Wow, messaging Jules. We got one, yeah. Wow, so they're all mocking you now. You're finished. You're done around here. We got one! He's tearing up. Mike, I thought they looked good, he said. Oh, you're finished. <laughs> you're finished. So I just got to make that point. You know, a lot of people think they're going to come at me. Now he goes, I'll stop messaging her. Sorry. There he is. So now you see, yeah, what a quick downfall, they say. Uh, when you see some guy in the chat going, oh, should I listen to him? Never listen to him. Anyone doubting me, believe me, they've been doing something terrible. Okay, ring the bells. There we go. Tenderizer, thank you for apologizing. We're done with him. Who's the <laughs> other one? Next Level Marketing is probably... Imagine what he's done. You see? They're always doing something. Uh, has Mike ever made steak burgers? Wow. Uh, so he actually is a full red retard. I thought Mike was just making this up. Nope. You're messaging a man's wife. Tenderizer, you're a sick little dork. July is the month of maniacs. Burger Buster. And now the groveling. He says, JK, not sorry. It's too late, Tenderizer. He's nothing. He's nothing. He's nothing. You've been Katsu yamagashi friend. You're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. Beat, beat, abuse, 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 beat, brothers. Okay. Uh, tenderizer, have you learned your lesson now? Okay. You know? And that's why if you saw pictures of these people as they chatted, you wouldn't even listen. But sometimes we get to go deep I'm to explain. Sorry. Okay, here's Ramsey. This is the guy Tenderizer thinks is good. Here he is. Now he's going to take these dry burgers off the grill. Look at this. Burger, Here he comes. Sit that 
on top of my bun. Oh my God, Wait. look at that. And Tenderizer thinks that's a nice burger. He's impressed by that because it has arugula. Look at that. I told you, we're 10 million subscribers. I'm not done yet. Now, I like my egg, quite runny. If you like it sort of oh easy, then leave it in there. But that for me is beautiful. Now that mushroom has been sitting on there for about 45 to 50 minutes. So it must be, you bite into it and it crumbles into uh, a dust. And look at that. He puts that on, look at that. A balancing act. Imagine the height. The flat cap mushroom with the beautiful baked egg. Baked and egg? How is it one's baked? Gone to medium. Here. Which is fine. And that one there. Oh boy. Mmm. Look at that. A nice. Yummy. Beautiful. Twist the pepper. And then from the there. The pepper's not going to help it. On she goes. Look at the height. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Delicious. Oh, I love it. I can't wait to extend my mouth like, uh,. The woman in Ghostbusters. The old lady in Ghostbusters. I got to extend my mouth that far. Well, come on. That has to be a burger worth celebrating. 10 no. million subscribers. No. Sorry. It's a From mess. the bottom of my burger, a big thank you to all of you. Now, I know there's someone out there that's dying to taste this. Now, watch this. This gets worse. So he's going to... He said, I know there's somebody out there who's dying to taste this. Guess who it's going to be? Watch this. Gordon, thank you so no! much. I'm honored to try we your 10 million him. subscriber burger. I think it... Wow. So it cuts to Sean Evans, the Hot Ones fakery guy. Here's Sean Evans. Down on the farm. Gordon Ramsay's 10 millionth subscriber burger. Now, Sean Evans, it's cutting to him, and Sean's supposed to be tasting Ramsay's burger. It's a completely different burger, though. It's a low burger. It's just a regular burger with some arugula on it. Nothing like Gordon Ramsay's burger. Watch this. Might have gotten damaged a little bit in transport, but still looks delicious. I just think it's it's missing something. Like uh, maybe, hot sauce, uh, donut, yeah, because your hot no, sauce. Or... By the way, all of his wings have mild sauce on it from Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. So he tries to act like he's so cool. His wings, when Sean's interviewing someone, they get the hot fiesta... El Scorcho. Sean has a packet of Taco Bell mild sauce that he puts on his wings. And he goes, I don't know why you're having a problem with these wings. These wings are so good. I have no problem. Yeah, because you're using mild sauce. Tell everyone. Tell everyone. He is the worst, and he's so popular. Every comment in his videos is not about the guest. It's always about Sean. Sean, you're amazing. You're the best interviewer that we've ever had. I can't believe nobody's been this great. It's because he's eating mild sauce. I hate Tell him. everyone. I can't even look at him. They're saying, what a sneak. Oh, my God. This guy in the chat says, Sean Evans is great. Sorry, not so Okay, this guy, Seth, is dead. Confirmed. He uses the hashtag sorry, not sorry. The name of Alyssa Milano's podcast. Look at this. Sean, Seth is dead. Sorry, not sorry. Sean Evans rules. So that's a Oof. confirmed. That's a comment you don't Sorry, want to not use. sorry is the biggest phrase you could ever use. So that guy, Seth is dead. He's a known around here that we hate. <laughs> uh, sorry, not sorry, he says. Sean Evans is great. Sean Evans rules. Now, has this um, Seth is dead guy been a bad faith guy for a while? Let's look at some of his other comments to see. Oh, wow. Sean Evans, he says. Okay. His dog. Seth is not dead. Have we ever caught... Seth is dead. Let's see. Get Michaela Peterson to call him to the show. Ramsey make gross scream. He might just be a nice wow. guy who's confused. So he's really stupid. Sorry, not sorry. I want to tell you who first came up with that hashtag. Woke women on Twitter. Then it was adopted by Allison Rosen's sidekick, this big fat blonde girl who started a podcast called Sorry, Not Sorry. Then Melissa Milano started a podcast called Sorry, Not Sorry. 
and you used the hashtag, sorry, not sorry, Sean Evans rules. Oh, Woodward says, I need permission to kill Seth. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I was going mad here today with all these guys here. So there's a lot of real who listen to this show that I can't stand. Let's see. We got Alex Gross, the Seth guy, Next Level Marketing. How do you even listen to Red Bar? You know? I How mean, do you even I feel listen like Sean could not be more Worse. opposite from any everything yeah. that we've ever stood for. Who <laughs> says sorry, not sorry in 2019 must be an alt account, an alt-right account. This must be Alex Gross. I mean, aren't you embarrassed? Seth, are you trolling? Uh, yeah, wow. Sean Evans has a robot coldness room. Yeah, of course. There should be no Red Bar listener that likes Sean Evans. You know, how cooked up are these listeners getting? You know, this is why I need to be like a daily show for 24 hours a day. Yeah, because have been gone for five yeah, days. And you you guys let these guys. It. It's really true. It's like some of these guys, it's like left to their own devices. They'll start liking truffle oil and Sean Evans and your mom's house. I bet Average Abij loves your mom's house. Until we started saying something. Left to your own devices. Not so good, some of you. These kinds of guys must be so mad listening. Seth is dead says, nah, just playing, fellas. I don't buy it. You said three things about Sean Evans being cool. I mean, come on, man. At least keep it to yourself. You know, if I bring somebody up as a fool, what are the odds that you disagreeing with me is going to work out well during the presentation here? <laughs> he says, I mean, I like hot ones, okay? But I'm not passionate about it. You like hot ones? I mean, we all watch hot ones, Are of you course. like a 14-year-old kid that your dad barely lets you watch our movies? You or should be watching hot ones to see the celebrities do mess-ups and then to scream a guttural yeah. scream when you see Sean and cover your eyes. I mean, guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, please... Don't be doing this But stuff. I give second chances. I'll give you a second chance. We'll give chance. him a second chance, but it's amazing how many guys, like, they got tricked. Oh, I thought Sean Evans was good. No, no, no. If they hate Trump, they suck. It's a good, easy tip. <laughs> it's an easy tip. We're not pro-Trump, no, guys. No, it's not that. That's no, not, no, it's not that. Of course, but, that's not it. It's about, I mean, look come at on. this fucking, look at look him. Look at him. Look at his head. Look at his eyes. They really, these people have no... And uh, his attitude. Like, if you can stand this guy's fucking, you know, and he brings out his laptop and goes, we're going to look at your Instagram. Any photos. guy that right. wears a Rolex and purposely tries to show it off while being a host, you should not be wearing a Rolex as a host of a TV show. We said this before. Let the Bert Kreischer the does it. Bert Kreischer does it. Sean does it. And there's this guy on Are You the One on MTV. He wears a big Rolex. You're the host. You're the host. You're nothing. You don't wear a Rolex. Oh, you're rich from YouTube ad money. Congratulations. He's wearing, and he's got to show it off. He tries to wear all of his sleeves up so he could show off his big Rolex. I feel the same hatred about Evans that Jules does. Thank Sean you. Evans wears brown shoes. He wrangles comedians who are the enemy. Yeah. 